Hello everybody, this is Beth Silak coming to you from the Harbor Springs Area Historical Society. And today I wanted to do a brief introduction to preserving your family heirlooms, starting with photographs. You wanna make sure that when you're storing photographs, you're not storing them in areas that have large temperature or relative humidity fluctuations. So basements, attics, garages, none of those are great for photographs because it's difficult to keep a stable temperature and relative humidity. And if the relative humidity changes or the temperature changes, it can cause condensation, mold, uh, and it's just in general not good for your photographs to be in that kind of an environment. We recommend storing historic family photographs in boxes that are something like this. We don't recommend um, plastic totes or tubs. Plastic in general is a very volatile material and it releases a lot of harmful gases as it degrades. There are certain types of plastic, which I'll show you later, which are um, inert. They uh, are actually really great for protecting um, artifacts and photographs, but your typical Ziploc bag or tub that you get from Meyer, those are harmful to photographs. We recommend these types of boxes, which are acid-free boxes, storage containers. Um, you can get them at many different archival suppliers. We generally get ours from uh, a company called Gaylord Archival, but there's also uh, Uline, University Services. There's a bunch of different places that you can find archival quality, acid-free storage boxes. So in this box, for example, we just have some envelopes. Um, these actually are storing postcards, but um, you can see that they're sort of the perfect size to be holding small little mementos, pictures, postcards. When preparing your family's historic photographs to go into storage, one of the things we recommend, apart from scanning each one so you have a digital copy, is to remove any sort of fasteners that you find on the photographs. So for example, this bunch of photographs that came into our collection has a paper clip, uh, which will inevitably rust and damage the photographs. Remove other items like uh, if there's a sticky note or something on the front, rubber bands, paper clips, basically anything that will harm the photograph later on. Now the purpose of storing each photograph individually is because these photographs in particular are mounted on this sort of old cardboard, mat board um, material. And this material does degrade and it's a lot like paper and newspaper and it releases harmful chemicals into the air as it degrades. And those can actually transfer from one image to the other. If you've ever opened say an old scrapbook and you notice when you move a picture that there's a distortion underneath it, that change in the color of the paper is actually from the acid from this type of cardboard or paper leaching out of it um, and onto other objects. So the folder acts as a buffer between one photograph and the next. We also use um, buffered and acid-free paper to do the same thing. So in this folder, for example, we have photographs on a page that are then separated by a layer of this thin acid-free paper. When you're storing photographs in plastic enclosures, you wanna make sure that they're preservation grade, um, archival quality, because they, uh, when done correctly, they're inert and they're see-through. So you can actually view the photos and things easier when they're in a clear plastic, and it's easier to handle them as well without leaving any sort of fingerprints or marks when they're safely enclosed in a plastic sleeve like this one. So the types of plastic to avoid, anything with acetate, 
Um, that degrades rapidly and causes changes in appearance and uh, fragility in your photographs. You also want to avoid PVC, those types of plastic. Uh, the plastic enclosures you're looking for are types of safe chemically inert polyester. So polypropylene, for example, is um, a good stable source to use. And anytime you're purchasing these plastic sleeves um, from an archival site, they will be preservation grade. If you go out to the dollar store and get some of those plastic sleeves that you put, uh, you know, note paper and things in for school, that's not necessarily a great enclosure and it is probably the wrong type of plastic. Many families store their photographs in photograph albums. And while there are some albums that are sold that are preservation and archival quality, most are simple albums with inserted pages. Um, these, for example, have a little plastic sleeve and paper that the photographs are glued to. Uh, from a preservation standpoint, this is not ideal. However, the great thing about a photo album is that you can flip through it with your family and actually take time to look at the images. You can put labels in with them to identify the people and the time and date, the location of where the photographs were taken. So how I remedy this in my own personal family history collection is I make copies of any historic photographs I have that need to be stored safely but I want to be able to display them for my family. So for example, one of these large pictures, make a scan, a digital copy, and if you don't have a large flatbed scanner or any type of scanner, take a picture with your phone. Um, most phones come with scanning apps um, that you can download for free. There's a, um, one called Google Scan, for example, that I've used in the past, or you honestly can simply take a picture of your picture and then print that out. And these copies can then go in an album, which you can flip through and, like I said, write down every detail about the photograph that you can. So to recap, the best way to store your photographs and your historic images is in an area of your home that has stable relative humidity and temperature. So not in the basement or the attic and not close to say a radiator or a, a spot in your house where you know you have a leak. Uh, you want to limit light exposure as much as possible by keeping things in archival quality boxes. And once you have something in an archival quality box, we do recommend separating each photograph from the other with some sort of enclosure. It can be plastic, like these polypropylene sleeves, or it can be paper, like these folders, the acid-free folders and acid-free tissue paper that we have inside that separates the photos from each other so that they don't negatively impact one another. Thank you so much for watching this video and for your support of the Harbor Springs Area Historical Society. If you'd like to see more of these videos, please let us know. Comment below and let me know what you're interested in learning about next. Maybe preserving historic documents, maybe uh, preserving textiles like wedding dresses or, or ceramics, um, other types of artifacts. We want to hear from you. What are you interested in learning about?